Ladies and gentlemen, this is Game in Zetacom video. We've got further news concerning graphics cards, this time coming to us from AMD's Tonga architecture. So the R9-285X has apparently a 384-bit memory interface and 2048 stream processors. This is also an article if you so desire, it's linked of course in the video's description where I go into a few other details as well as to a couple of pertinent links, but anyway we'll discuss it in this video anywho. So it's fair to say that Nvidia are pretty happy right now. They've had a very successful launch with the Maxwell 970 and the 980. I would continue to levy my original criticisms regarding the cards. For many who own a high-end 700 series or equivalent Radeon or whatever, you're probably not necessarily going to want to upgrade. However, if you've missed out on, say, the 700 series and you've got, say, a GTX 670, then it makes a really good compelling reason to upgrade to Maxwell, despite, of course, the fact that we are waiting on those Maxwell revision Bs. AMD, on the other hand, are keen to capitalize on this. And so the rumors are swirling because in India, we've just seen the launch of the R9-285, which is a Tonga. Um, just to clarify, it's still using the Tonga architecture, but it's a cut-down Tonga. And so Raja Kaduri from AMD was discussing the Tonga architecture and somehow it slipped out. I'm not necessarily certain if it was him that said it or the interviewer saw some slides or whatever happened. But um, it's emerged that it's going to be a full 384-bit memory bus. The rumors persist that this is going to be either a 3 or a 6 gigabyte variant of the card. The rumours so far seem to back up there's going to be two models, for what it's worth, um, which is definitely an improvement over the 285. So for those of you who don't necessarily know about the 285, I've put a link in the description of the article that I've linked, where I've done a full breakdown architectural analysis as well as review of the 285 and the Tonga architecture anyhow, but there's been some significant changes to the architecture. Effectively, what they've done is massively beefed up the efficiency of the card, particularly in terms of how it dealt with data, shunting it around the memory. Um, and so it compresses that. There's also been some improvements on the compute side of things as well. And AMD are basically going towards the last stages of implementations of HSA. And we all know that HSA is becoming incredibly important right now for gaming. Or, well, not just gaming as well, folding and mining, of course, are very important uh, compute, and that's one of the reasons of, uh, that's also going to benefit for some of these changes. But in particular, gaming is really starting to push this stuff, and even Intel are realizing, hey, we need to really capitalize on this. I'm finding it quite interesting right now in the GPU's affair. We know titles like The Evil Within are going to be extremely memory hungry. Um, especially when it comes to the GPU. We covered, actually, in an article today, I did, and as well as a video from Amata, but today I did, like, a large breakdown and analysis of why the Evil Within is supposedly going to be having 4 gigabyte recommended requirements for the GPU. And so it becomes a really tricky affair um, regarding memory. So the bottom line for many of us is while sure that recommended spec as far as I can tell is most likely not for 1080p with more conservative settings hopefully if they have any sense at all that's going to be with higher specs in mind because otherwise it just doesn't really make sense given the memory requirements of say Metro and even Crisis 3 at 1440p but when it comes to raw performance and let's face it that's probably the most critical point for most of you if you're looking at buying a card and you're like, oh, okay, you know what, I don't care if it's AMD, I don't care if it's NVIDIA, all I give a crap about is how many frames per second it gets me in Call of Duty, or whatever your chosen poison would be, then ultimately it comes down to a price-performance perspective. Now, as I said, NVIDIA are really happy right now with the Maxwell launch, and they should be. I would argue that the 970 is considerably more compelling than the 980. Given the price discrepancy between them, 
unless you really, really need that bleeding edge performance and you're willing to SLI, I would probably say the 970 is the way to go and simply overclock the bejesus out of it because from what I'm hearing, they overclock pretty nicely. But here's the fact. The R9-285X could be very competitive from a price and performance standpoint. I don't necessarily know if it's going to be faster than, say, the 970 or 980. But if it's competitively clocked, and by which I mean the, the Tonga architecture, from my playing around with my review of it, I found that you can you can bump those speeds up quite nicely. Um, they at least on the review model that I had, which I believe was a Club 3D. I've still got it somewhere, but it's not within my line of sight. But yeah, it was a Club 3D. So I got a pretty good set of um, increases on both the GPU and the memory clock. The memory clock doesn't really mean so much, but the GPU, the core clock, does, because that tells us what the actual architecture can do. Memory, they can change, but... I was more curious about what the actual architecture itself can do, and there's certainly room there for them to bump that clock speed up. Now, of course, on the full Tonga, there's going to be more compute units, so we could be seeing a situation where the extra heat does somewhat nullify that clock, but, of course, we're just going to have to wait. Now, with the architectural improvements, along with a wider bus and improvements to compute, it really comes down to numerous things. What's the clock speed going to be like? Is the card going to respond quite nicely when it comes to memory bandwidth? What I found with my review when I was bumping them up is that cores definitely still made a larger difference than memory clock, but then I didn't play around huge amounts, right? So that can change. The bottom line, however, is that AMD could be pretty competitive. I'm not saying it will beat the 970, and I'm frankly not going to make any predictions because we don't know what other changes they're going to have. We don't know the core speeds. We don't know the ROP count. I'm hearing some people say it's going to be 32 ROPs. There are others which are saying 48, and others which are even implying higher still. And so without knowing those details, we can't know how it's going to compete, particularly when it comes to high resolutions and, say, different forms of anti-aliasing, say, MSAA and, um, uh, let's say, anti uh, anisotropic filtering and that type of thing could obviously have major, major implications on the cards uh, and the fill rates, particularly when it comes to the clock speed as well on all of this. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It, it turned out to be a bit longer than what I anticipated. But anyway, I'll see you soon, my friends. Take care, and bye for now.